the IGSBA World Finals is the world's premier event for all things personal watercraft. And now in its 29th consecutive year, the IGSBA continues to be the unrivaled showcase for personal watercraft competition. Everyone out here is really, really good. And you, you, you just, uh, you have to wait for someone to make a mistake. You can't get them just on your riding skill alone. Oh yeah, the log jumps are good this year. They're uh, good and tall and uh, people are popping wheelies over them. So it's gonna be good. And the setting, like all those for the prior 28 World Finals, will once again be Lake Havasu City, Arizona, known as the personal watercraft capital of the world. 21's my lucky number. This is my 21st year at the World Finals. And a lot of these young guys, they're not even 21 years old yet. And in part one of our two-part World Finals coverage, Pro Ski will be competing, led by defending world champion Kevin Rederer of Austria. I just go out there and try my best and go out and having fun. And I think this is the most important thing. And then I will see if I have luck, if I don't have luck, if I could start or not, if I want a long jump. Yeah, it's all open. But a host of other top riders and past champions will be looking to unseat them. It's part one of the Quakey Sense IGSBA World Finals presented by McGraw Insurance coming up next and only here on War on the Water. campground in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. It's time now for part one of our two-part coverage of the Quakey Sense IJSBA World Finals presented by McGraw Insurance. Hello everyone and welcome to this special presentation. Thanks for joining us, Ami and Howard, and I'll be joined by my broadcast partner, Dave Arnold, momentarily. While all the top riders from around the world have converged upon Lake Havasu, and in fact, this is the largest gathering of international athletes anywhere in the world, outside of the Olympic Games, more than 30 different countries represented and more than 500 entries set to compete. And in part one, we'll showcase racing from pro ski, while next week in part two, we'll have action from pro runabout and highlights from pro freestyle. And now let's meet the third member of our broadcast team and Don Dawson, who's down in Performance Alley. Don? Hi, I'm Don Dawson here for the 2010 Quakey Sense World Finals. And of course, you're gonna get to see a whole lot of fast racers and uh, the stand-up racing. But that's not the only place that you can find stand-up racers because yes, they too, like me, are shopaholics. And look at all the little celebrities I've been catching, like this hot, fast guy. This is none other than Bill the Hurricane Haig, and you're gonna get to see him racing in just a little bit. How you doing, bud? Doing great, hey. Performance Alley, you gotta love it. Lots of stuff to buy here. I know, it's crazy. I see you've already been shopping. That is an awesome shirt from Jet Tribe. Well, this is one of those Team Jet Tribe. They give me these, so I'm good that way. I don't have to buy these. Would you like one? Spoiled, rotten, and yes, I would. Okay, we'll see what we can do. Okay, let's go see who else we can find. Thanks, Don, and let's check out some highlights now from Pro Ski Qualifying. Top eight riders would advance to the motos coming out of heat number one, a seven lap qualifier. And right off the bat, it would be the 43 year old and 17 time overall world champion, Mike Klippenstein of Canada, who would record the whole shot. And your defending pro ski world champion, Kevin Redder of Austria, who began the race back in fourth place, would lose his ski, later finishing in the seventh spot. And the 2007 Pro Ski World Champion Mike Klippenstein would take home the heat win with Japan's Masaharu Takanashita finishing right behind him in second place. Time now for heat number two as again the top eight riders would advance on to the motos. And right off the bat a surprise, the young rider Omar Al Rashid of Dubai would get the whole shot with Big Mac Chris McCluggage right behind him in second place. And the 1995 Pro Ski World Champion Chris McCluggage would get past Omar Al Rashid in the splits and take over the race lead. And Jean-Baptiste Body, the top French rider who began this race all the way back in fifth place, would charge hard to the front. And towards the end of the race on the final lap coming out of the splits, he would challenge Chris Big Mac McCluggage for the win. And he would come up a little bit short, but still charge hard to finish up in second place behind the Heat 2 winner, Chris McCluggage. In all, 29 pro ski riders from around the world descended on Lake Havasu City, Arizona for a chance at a world title, and it's come down to this. A last chance qualifier, the final four riders will get into the main event, and it's Rusty Wilson who would record the whole shot, followed by Kiefer King. Rusty Wilson would stumble through the splits then later on, as the rookie pro rider Kiefer King would look to take advantage. 
coming out of the big 180 turn to the front straightaway, and Kiefer King would waste no time getting past Rusty Wilson as he would take command of the race. And it would be all Kiefer King, the rookie pro rider from Orange County, California. He would take home the last chance qualifier victory and advance on to the motos. Time now for moto number one for pro ski as I welcome in my broadcast partner, Dave Arnold. 20 riders on the line representing 12 different countries. Your defending world champion is Kevin Rederer, just 17 years of age, two qualification heats and an LCQ. Chris Big Mac McCluggage won one of the heats along with Mike Klippenstein as we go on board with Conrad Cole. The start so important, Dave, and Conrad already getting left well behind of the pack, and you can see him basically doing wheelies down the front straightaway, getting a lot of air, and it just shows you how rough the conditions are as they head to the left side of the race course through the split section. Hey, you can see Rob Flores trying to sneak his nose up there and say, uh, welcome, Conrad, to the pro class. Of course, Conrad Cole turning pro this year. Omar Rashid out there, one of our youngsters out of Dubai, looking really good, but it looks Looks like it's going to be Chris McCluggage and the Japanese rider Kirahashi battling for the lead of the inside split. Wow. So the 13-time overall world champion Chris McCluggage looks like he'll check out with the whole shot. But wait a minute. McCluggage goes down in the tray coming out of the splits. So that allows the Frenchman Jean-Baptiste Body to overtake McCluggage coming out of the splits into the 180 to the front straightaway. So Body up front. McCluggage dropped to second place. So a critical mistake for your 13-time overall world champion as we go on board with the 20-year-old Conrad Cole, the Canadian rider. And we'll be back with more of the 29th annual Quick Sense IJSBA World Finals presented by McGraw Insurance in just a moment. Coverage of the 2010 IJSBA World Finals has been made possible by Quakey Sense, by McGraw Insurance Services, by Monster Energy Drink, by Reva Motorsports, by Blosion, by Wave Armor, by Sea-Doo, by Yamaha, by Kawasaki, and by the Lake Havasu City Convention and Visitors Bureau. We are Team Austria and we love Kevin Ryderer. <laughs> So the Kevin Rederer fan club out at full force as we welcome you back to the 29th annual Quakey Sense IJSBA World Finals from the Crazy Horse Campgrounds and Resort right here in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, presented by McGraw Insurance. Well, Jean-Baptiste's body continues to lead it, and he's being pursued closely by the 13-time overall world champion, Chris McCluggage. And let's take a moment to step away from the race action and visit with Don Dawson, who's in Performance Alley. I don't know about you, but I always like the view from the top. Yep, we are at the top of the monster stage. And we are hanging out right here at the 2010 Quakey Sense World Finals, where I get to see a lot of old familiar faces and a lot of really fun, crazy new faces, but all of it right here at the monster stage. And thanks to Don Dawson for that update as we come back to race action. And one racer in particular hasn't found his rhythm yet, that being the defending world champion Kevin Rederer began this race back in seventh and has now battled up to fifth place. And earlier we talked to the young rider about trying to defend his title from a year ago. Uh, I think it will be really tough. We set up the skis and everything is ready. Um, I just go out there and try my best and go out and having fun. And I think this is the most important thing and then I will see if I have luck, if I don't have luck, if I could start or not, if I want a long jump. Yeah, it's all open. 
So Kevin Redderer ready to defend that world championship from a year ago. Meanwhile, rookie pro rider Quentin Bosch having all kinds of issues. He went down on the log jump and struggling to stay on his ski. And I'll tell you what, Dave, these conditions absolutely punishing. And body goes down in the splits, oh. Dave, as Max going to take advantage again past him. So Jean-Baptiste's body goes down in the identical spot where Big Mac went down, but body goes off this ski into the water, so that's going to cost him at least one, maybe two, maybe three positions. It just hinges on how fast race patrol can get him back onto a ski, and it looks like he's back on the water, so Jean-Baptiste body maybe will lose one or two spots, and it looks like the Japanese rider is going to come up and run alongside him, that being Kurahashi, and they're going to battle for that third spot, so it looks like Jean-Baptiste body will lose two spots on the race course. Dave, still very fortunate, but just shows you how difficult these water conditions are, because basically, everybody's made a mistake so far. Yeah, I think he hit the same hole that McCluggage did. We're going to get a good look at it right now. You can just see how rough it is. He came up off a wake there, and then all of a sudden, he went down, subbed it, and it literally stripped him off the ski. I mean, when you take that underwater and you're not prepared for it, all you got holding on to is that handle pull, and sometimes it's not enough. Well, it looks like right now, Chris McCluggage, though, he is the man in charge of his own destiny out there. Can he hold on to it is the question. You know, so many times a little stupid stuff is taking him uh, world titles away from him. But, you know, Kiriyashi and Body right now, that's where the real battle. McCluggage is just hoping these guys battle out behind him and something happens. But Redderer is still on the charge, you know. And one thing I said about Redderer last year when I saw him come out, and really race. He really reminds me of Jeff Jacobs. Uh, Jeff Jacobs, the most winningest stand-up rider with 10 world titles under his belt. Looks tall, very lanky body, but very fluid. And you can see when he uh, when uh, he's out there, you see the elbows come out. But body, he's able to get by Kiriyashi and he, in the splits and take over second. So now McCluggage with the target on his back. And so body doing a nice job working through the splits, coming through the inside. Meanwhile, Kurahashi working to the outside splits. And when they met, body able to take advantage and get past them. But that battle not over yet as we see the two riders go by the veteran, Bill the Hurricane Haig. And now Kevin Redderer has pulled within striking distance of second place as your defending world champion started seventh after a very poor start but look at this now he's now creeping up on third place that being Kurahashi the rider from Japan so Kevin Redderer showing the heart of a champion the young man just 17 years of age from Vienna Austria you figure he's going to go out like a true champion and battle all the way to the very end and I wouldn't be surprised to see him before this race is all said and done battle and maybe make a move for that second spot of the race course because right now He's going to need a lot of help like these other riders to get past Big Mac. Well, one of the things you pointed out there, you saw Bill Haig, he unfortunately down a lap there, and that's what we're getting into. We're getting into lap traffic, and that's going to make the difference. You know, the experience out there, and oh, a race leader Chris McCluggage has gone down. Oh, Ian. And the one thing that's not good for Big Mac, he's quite a ways away from his ski, but you see Race Patrol hurrying to get him to his ski as he dives into the water, but I'm not sure they got him close enough to his ski. Mac not wanting to waste any time, but I think he would have been better suited to stay on the back end of that race patrol boat to get him closer to his ski. Instead, he dove off, and with the current and the water conditions, look at, he's still struggling to get on the ski. Dave, he's going to drop all the way back to sixth place, oh. and he might be seeing his hopes and chances of winning a world title go by the wayside. So will Jean-Baptiste's body be able to hold on for the Moto One win, or will Kevin Redderer, the defending world champion, be able to make the comeback complete? Stay with us to find out as you're watching the 29th annual Quakey Sense IJSBA World Finals presented by McGraw Insurance.
Welcome back to the 29th annual Quickie Sense IJSBA World Finals from the Crazy Horse Campgrounds in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, presented by McGraw Insurance. Well, Jean-Baptiste Body continues to lead it in pro ski, and Dave, you pointed out the fact that Jeff Jacobs won his 10th and final world title back in 2001. Since then, no other American rider has won a pro ski world title as the white flag is out and Body and Redder are looking to go one and two in this opening moto. The story's now turned into uh, Body and uh, Redderer. I mean, a lot of the names that we've talked about over the years, and uh, these are the new names. And Redderer going down there oh. momentarily. So Redderer able to hold on to his ski, but scrubbing some time as he went down briefly into the water. He just lost control of his ski. And Dave, it has been very physically taxing. I'm curious to see how these riders stand up to moto number two and another 12 laps on the race course. It's going to be very tough for them to regroup physically and also go back and retune the boats and get them both ready for moto number two. That's right. You got to make those things last, like we talked about in the uh, pro open runabouts. You got to make them last for all these laps. They've done heat races, a couple guys done LCQs, and you know, and then you got to do two motos. I mean, it's exhausting. And also, as rough it is out there, it beats you up. I mean, things loosen up, carburetor bolts. Uh, you know, all kinds of stuff, uh, bumpers on the side of the boats, the plastics, things just tend to come apart in these rough conditions. So Jean-Baptiste body, it's been a tale of two races for this young man from France after getting a good start and actually overtaking Chris McCluggage after he went down right off the start. Body went down in the same exact place and he lost two positions on the race course, was able to get past Kurahashi then when McCluggage went down the top left section of the race course and now he's staring a Moto1 win directly in the face. Only a couple sets of turns to go and Jean Paty's body will take home the opening Moto win as the checkered flag comes out and how about that? Jean Paty's body, step number one in terms of winning a pro ski world title. He takes home the Moto1 win and Kevin Redderer, what more can you say about this 17 year old from Vienna, Austria? Started seventh, battled all the way back up to second place. A good strong finish for your defending pro ski world champion. As we take a look now at all the Moto1 results. And let's now hear from our Moto One winner, that being Jean Baptiste's body. It's very difficult. It's uh, very assembly. It's go uh, for the for the crash. It's uh, very um, slowly. Okay. Yeah, slowly and for finish, for finish, not for crash, just for finish. So one moto down, one to go. And while we have a break in the action, let's find out where Don Dawson is in Bender Alley. One final note on Quakey Sense. If you didn't get a chance to get Quakey Sense at the World Finals, don't worry. There is a Quakey Sense distributor right here in the U.S. It's Tech One right out of Lake Havasu City, Arizona. You can call those guys up or go online anytime and get your Quakey Sense fix. Time now for moto number two for pro ski. So Jean Baptiste's body had lane choice. He goes to the outside grouping. Meanwhile, Kevin Redderer will start to the inside. So body had first choice. He chooses to start to the outside. We'll have an onboard camera on Bill Haig and also Conrad Cole as we're off racing. So 20 riders, 12 different countries, all vying to become world champion. Unfortunately, it'll only be one rider. And you have to like the chances that body Redderer and Kurahashi have your top three from Moto1 as everybody heads down that long front straightaway as we go on board with Conrad Cole. And again, he's left way behind the other riders as Chris McCluggage looks to lead all the riders to the inside split. Once again, Big Mac gets a great start, Dave. He's so quick out of the gates. The question is, can he get through the second moto without making any mistakes? Well, I mean, if even if you're to give him a, uh, with a uh, five and a one, that's a six. That's just not going to be enough if you got guys like Redderer and Body running up in that top part of the pack hounding you. So if they're right behind you, that's going to take away your possibilities. I mean, there's always a po podium possibility, but I don't think, uh, you know, championships. And it looks like Clipper goes down. Mike Klippenstein, former world champion in this class, uh, the most those titles than any other racer and whether it's been amateur or pro he's won several of them out there we're back on board right there with bill haig who was 12th in moto number one you can just see how rough it is back there and just think after the first lap they come around they got to do that log jump on top of this rough water 12 laps for a world title second and final moto for pro ski and chris big mac mcluggage checks out with the whole shot followed by al rashid and body who's third redderer gets a better start he's in fourth so all the favorites in the thick of it except for Kurahashi. So Kurahashi this time doesn't get a particularly good start and you figure with body 
running in that third spot. And Redderer back and forth. Those two are going to dice it out here for a world championship. But Redderer needs to finish in front of Body to win that world title. And likewise, Body needs to finish in front of Redderer. If you do the math and you combine the results of both motos. And we'll be back with more of the 29th Annual Quickie Sense IJSBA World Finals presented by McGraw Insurance in just a moment. Coverage of the 2010 IJSBA World Finals has been made possible by Quakey Sense, by McGraw Insurance Services, by Monster Energy Drink, by Reva Motorsports, by Blosion, by Wave Armor, by Sea-Doo, by Yamaha, by Kawasaki, and by the Lake Havasu City Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome back to the 29th Annual Quickie Sense IJSBA World Finals from the Crazy Horse Campgrounds in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, presented by McGraw Insurance. Chris Big Mac McCluggage continues to pace the field. And before we return to race action, let's visit one more time with Don Dawson, who's in Vendor Alley. Well, on my epic extravaganza of shopping, there's one place that I always have to hit, and it's Jet Tribe. Not only do they have great lifestyle clothing, but Tony Bo has really been venturing into the racing gear. And I gotta tell you, I'm excited as heck to see all the cool stuff he's been coming up with. Life jackets and wetsuits, and now, one of the latest things he's hit us with are these brand new racing boots straight from Jet Tribe. These things are fantastic. They're extra grippy, and they're actually a little bit higher than other racing boots, and the reason for that is it really helps prevent getting sand and gravel in your foot when you're trying to race. Once again, Jet Tribe proving a must-see when you come to the 2010 World Finals. And thanks to Don Dawson for that update. As we come back to race action, Chris Big Mac McCluggage continues the pace to field. Jean-Baptiste Body looking for his first ever pro ski world title back in second as we pan our cameras back and Kevin Redderer remains docked in that fourth position. And it looks like Quinton Bosch, oh man, off his boat. You know, he got seventh in moto number one and uh, now it's just, he's slowly stripping, you know, slipping backwards and I'll tell you. And there's Mike Klippenstein, you know what? I, it looks like they're tearing something off the side of his boat. Is that his bumpers on the side? I do believe so. So it looks like they're going to try and get him uh, back out on the water, and that's why he was flannering out there with something that was messing with the handling on the boat. And Jean-Baptiste's body along the back straight away. You can see just how rough the water conditions are. Lots of white caps out there, and body goes down there, but body able to hold on to the ski. And boy, if he had gone down, he'd be in danger of losing that Pro Ski World title. And you can see that was very smart how small he made himself. He got his head and his body below his handle pull, which allowed when the water will roll right over the top of it. If you got your head sticking up and your ski goes down, it's going to hit your face of your helmet and also your visor, and it's literally going to rip you off. 
White flag out. Can Jean Baptiste's body hold on to that second spot and keep Kevin Redderer behind him? He has about a 15 second lead over Redderer. Or can Redderer pull out the miracle and defend his world title in pro ski? Meanwhile, Chris McCluggage oblivious to all of it because he is running away with the second moto and will get the victory. But Jean Baptiste's body looking at the big picture right now. He stands to win the Pro Ski World title for 2010 unless he makes a huge mistake or his ski breaks down. Now that's what we're really going to talk about right now with our leaders. The last couple laps when it comes down to it, you know, anything could happen. you got to ride smart. You know, McCluggage, he's up front. He knows, you know, hey, there's a possibility I'll be somewhere. But in body's mind, he's thinking, don't make a mistake. Don't screw up. And you're telling yourself this. Trust me, I've been there. And it'll be interesting to see whether or not on this last lap, Batiste's body goes to that equalizer buoy to the outside just in case yeah. he thinks he might have missed the buoy because he's got about a 15 second lead on Kevin Redderer. So he's got plenty of a lead to go out and circle that far buoy just in case he missed the buoy somewhere during the course of this race. Meanwhile, another rider down in the center of the course as Batiste's body now to the left section looks to wrap up the second moto and take home his first ever Pro Ski World title. Well, this is going to uh, make him elated for sure as he comes across. I'm not sure if he knows exactly, you know, with how everybody else finished, but uh, he's got to feel confidence with that one-two finish for this uh, moto number two. That's going to give him the world title, and I think he does know it because he just slows down, uh, you know, and McCluggage takes the win. But here comes Body, and there it is, our new pro Ski Open champion, and he knows it all right. He's letting the crowd know how excited he is. And a great job, two consistent runs for Jean Baptiste's body, and the elation felt by all there as he comes to the shoreline. He is your 2010 Pro Ski World Champion and the fourth French rider in the history of the IJSBA to win a Pro Ski World title. So, body, he's been chasing this title for years. His best finish was second, and now he finally climbs the top of the mountain as we look at the overall results. And Don Dawson's down on the beach with our 2010 Pro Ski World Champion, Jean Baptiste Body. So uh, he, I wanted to know how he was feeling, because I could tell he's very emotional. Uh, yeah. He feels good. He feels good. <laughs> All right, I know you got a lot of people that you'd like to thank for this. Jean Baptiste Body, tell me about some of the people you'd like to thank. Elle voudrait savoir, elle voudrait que tu, tu, tu cites les gens que tu aimerais remercier. Euh... Mais toi, ma famille, Taekwondo Racing, my family, uh, Drop Zone is a shop in French, uh, my mother, my girlfriend, uh, quoi qu'il sens, et, uh, et Kinté, uh, mon mécano, my mechanic, uh, thank you, thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, your 2010 Pro Ski Open World Champion, Jean Baptiste Body. So that'll do it for part one of our two part coverage of the Quakey Sense IJSBA World Finals presented by McGraw Insurance. And make your plans to be with us right back here next week when we have action for pro runabout and pro freestyle. So until then, on behalf of Dave Arnold, Don Dawson, and our entire crew, I'm Ian Howard saying so long once again from beautiful Lake Havasu City, Arizona. And we'll see you next time with more War on the Water.